The purpose of an index, which is what you'll find at the back of a lot of books, is to be able to take keywords throughout the book, or in this case this document here, marking them so they can appear at the back of the book alphabetized. The best way to explain this is, is that, let's say you read a book, and in this case this document, which is 103 pages long, and this document is basically about a particular type of software. More specifically, it's medical billing, how to go ahead and bill insurances and bill patients um, using this medical billing software. And let's say you, you read this document and you're learning how to schedule patients using the software or create an appointment. Well, you can do one of three things. You can either read the whole book again and then highlight the section, which is very annoying, or you can go to the beginning of the document, which this document does have a table of contents however the table of contents is in the order of operation of reading the book basically you read from page one and it goes sequentially all the way down to page 103 as you can tell there's 103 pages here or better yet you can come back to the index with the keywords that are alphabetized as long as you remember the the keyword appointment hey there it is appointment now what is it about the appointment I wanted to make an appointment so here's the main entry and in the main entry I learned how to make an appointment which is on page 51 so the indexing can be very helpful for people who who finish reading your book or document to be able to go back look up key words here at the back of the book and go throughout the document to be able to easily find them on what page you know listed here as the marked entry in contrast to that let me scroll all the way at the top of my document to show you the table of contents and I don't have it listed table of contents here I chose not to put the title in but you can see it here it's marked sequentially so again, to use the medical billing software book, first of all, you need to set up your computer before you can install the software. And then second of all, you have some key setups for trainers before they actually start training because you got to set up the software, including setting up permissions for the user to access the software, the defaults and setting up master files of things that you would like to use within the software before you actually start working in the software or training on the software. And you can see, again, table of contents is sequentially the order of operation and its beginning up here in page 9, well a little bit earlier in Roman numerals, but going from page 9 basically all the way down page by page, sorting ascendingly 9 all the way down to page 103. Now like I said I can scroll through here and look for appointment, but boy that's really hard when it's not alphabetized. But again, my index is. So table of contents has its own purpose of what to expect when you're reading the book from beginning to end where the index is for your purpose after you read it saying hey where's this key word that I want to look up again really quick when it's alphabetized. So to go back down to my index I can hit F5 again. It brings up my go to. Do I want to go to a section, a line? Well I want to go to a page number and I think it was page 101. I'll hit enter on the keyboard and hey there we go it's on page 101. You can see how much easier it is to, and how much more beneficial for your reader to have an index when they want to, after finish reading it, they want to be able to go back to a certain place within the book and all they can remember is the key word, appointment. Oh, make an appointment. There is page 51. There's two types of entries within the index. There's the main entry, which you see right here, just one key word. Of course, when I click on it, it highlights the whole index. And as you recall, in earlier training videos, anytime you click on a text and it highlights it, it just means it's dynamic text, meaning that it can be updated at any time because things can change throughout the document, like this keyword, account type. If I typed in more text above page 26, this could bump it down to page 27, right? And you can right click it and update the field here, but I'm moving too fast here. Let me back up. I'll click off. So you have the main entry, and it's just tied to a page number. Then you have a main entry here, but you have sub-entries. The main entry, or the main key word, the thought, is appointment. And there's several things you can do with appointment. You can make an appointment. You can check in the patient. You can check out a patient. It all is relating to the main entry, appointment, and these are just sub-entries. So that's why appointment doesn't have a page number to it, because in and of itself it doesn't mean much. But it is uh, grouping everything that has to do with an appointment, checking in and checking out a patient, and so on, how to set up an appointment. So let me go ahead and show you what an actual marked entry looks like. It's going to be ugly. It's not pretty. I'm not the one for uh, coding here. I just like using buttons and clicking and inserting stuff. But let me take you to this page here, page 53, where I have my check-in and check-out patient that's related to my main entry appointment. Hit F5 on the keyboard. Let me go ahead and type in 53, make sure I've got where I'm going to, a page, page number, and hitting Enter. And I'll close out of this. And I'll scroll down just a bit, and there it is, checking in a patient, checking out a patient. Now, like I said, this is going to get ugly, because the moment I turn on my show hide codes here, 
there you go it's revealing the code or the marked entry basically what I've done is I click next to any text where I want to be able to mark it and then I I go ahead and insert the coding here and I'll show you how to do it in just a second but the purpose of the coding as you can see here is two things first of all you can see appointments my main entry then I has a colon separating it from my sub entry so as long as I have the the main entry here it'll be in my index listed as appointment with no page number where the sub entry check in patient and if I scroll down let's see there it is page 53 in the lower right hand corner will actually have the leader the dot dot dots it leads my eye to the page number in the index okay and if I just had it as a main entry no sub entry then this right here would be deleted or it wouldn't be there it would just have the main entry here so I don't care about this coding here see the XE and stuff like that I mean that's for Microsoft that's not for me I just care about what my main entry and sub entries are so look don't start typing this in I'm going to show you how to easily insert uh, an entry or mark an entry next to a keyword okay it's just basically like inserting bookmarks only this time we're going to insert an entry here okay well I don't need my codes on to insert or mark entries with throughout my documents so I'll go ahead and click this to turn it off because boy that's pretty ugly isn't it but it helps me know what's already marked if I need to go well I can't remember if I mark click copay here so I'll turn it on and boom there it is okay I don't need to mark that so let me scroll up and let me just pick something here how about moving an appointment I'll click right next to the one I want to mark an entry so it appears my index and then go up and click on the references tab and before I do that let me just click on the home tab and turn off my show codes because what's going to happen is is that the moment I mark this as an entry to be in my index it'll automatically turn on the code so I can see what it looks like anyway so let me go to my references tab and it's over here in the index group and I just have to click on mark entry now like I said there was two types of entries your main entry and your sub entry remember how we just looked over it here we had appointment as the main entry and the sub entry was uh, check in a patient you don't have to have both you can do one or the other like if I did something simple and I just said okay the main entry here is for moving appointment if I just type in move I just left it like that and I marked it boom the moment I mark it and I close out of it it's gonna do two things first of all it inserts the coding and the keyword move appointment now that's gonna be in the index the beginning with the letter alphabetized under the M's okay and it's gonna be tied to the page number in the lower right hand corner that it appears on which is 53 okay so that's good how about something else um, finding an appointment how about if we go ahead and, and we do one more so I come up here click next to find appointment click my mark entry and let's say it's going to be appointment now I want to be careful because remember in the index where I had appointment as the main entry and sub entry down below checking in checking out a patient you can see right down below if I want it to be listed under the same grouping appointment I want to make sure I type it in exactly as uh, the main entry as I see it as listed throughout the document that I've already inserted appointment so make sure it's spelled right don't put appointments because then it will have its own listing but I want it to appear under the same main entry appointment as checking in checking out a patient okay then the name of the sub entry doesn't matter I mean find apt for appointment and then click mark and there it is it's got the main entry when I close out of here right here and then the sub entry find appointment in fact you can leave these codes on if you want to be able to change them and say look the check-in patient is going to be and I'm gonna delete this and just type in AA Alcoholics Anonymous I mean okay it doesn't make sense but you get the point you can make changes right the only thing that you don't want to mess with is the colon you don't want to mess with any coding just mess with the names if you want in other words don't mess with them but change them delete them or update them okay and then when you're finished marking the entries throughout your whole document well first of all I'm going to come to the home tab and turn off my show hide codes and then hit F5 and go to my page 103 nope it was 101 hit enter and I can uh, go ahead and do one of two things if this is the first time inserting an index then I'll show you how to do that if not then you can go ahead and right click this and update the field let me show you first how to insert an index I'm just gonna go ahead and and delete all this okay okay so I deleted my index so it looks like we're starting afresh here like you are you went through your document you marked all the, the keywords that you'd like and after you mark them you want to insert the index so you come up here on the references tab over to the index group and then we want to insert an index click on the button here and it comes to the index tab and then just come down here and click OK now before I click OK here's the preview of what my index is gonna look like I mean automatically it's gonna rush through my document find all the keywords that I marked and after I click OK it's gonna dump them here and in the preview 
I mean, what you see is what you get. I mean, that, that doesn't look good to me. The preview says, like, Aristotle, the page number is going to be right next to the keyword. No, I don't like that. I'm going to choose a different format, something fancy. That's not better, but in any case, it, it kind of defines alphabetically the A's, the B's, and the C's. And you can scroll down through here to see what your sub-entries would look like. But more so, I like the dot, dot, dots, the leaders. Okay, I don't like the page numbers right next to them. So I'll go ahead and check right align, and it bumps those page numbers over to the right, where I can choose a tab, leader, dot, 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 and that's how it's going to look. When I'm finished, click OK. And then it scrolls through the document. Because I had a previous index here, it says, look, do you want to replace it? In any case, I'll click OK or click Yes here. And it just, boom, it puts it right in there. Hey, that's kind of fancy, isn't it? Well, that's what it said it would be, was fancy. Scroll all the way up to uh, the beginning of my index, and hey, there it is. There's my AAA, which is my main entry. Because remember how I checked in patient? I said that the main entry is going to be AAA, no longer appointment. So it pulled it out of the appointment main entry grouping and shoved it underneath the AAA. And then also finding an appointment. We added that as the main entry under appointment. So it makes it really nice, again, for the uh, reader of your uh, document or book to be able to think of a keyword, alphabetically come back here, and know what page number it's going to be on. Now, by the same token, like I said, if you go throughout your document and you make a lot of changes, let's say check in patient 53. Let's go to that page, F5, type in 53, hit enter, close out of here. Uh, there's the check in patient. Let's say I'm going to do something very destructive here. I'm going to hold down the control key and hit enter several times because I want to push that several pages down. It's no longer on page 53. Check in patient what? Let's see, that's 56. This one's going to be on 57 now. So I'm going to go to the end of my document here. I no longer know what page my index is on because I bumped everything down quite a bit. And there it is. So it's not on page 53, right? We have to update this. So you can right click and select update field. Boom, it automatically updates it for me, but look, it got rid of the leaders. That's the only problem when you right-click and select update. But if you want your leaders back, or even a different template, you can always, when in doubt, right-click and say you'd like to edit the field. Click the Index button, and you get the same view as you did before when you first inserted it. It gives me the default from template. Again, I wanted fancy, and you have to do this every time. Basically, if you want the same template, in fact, I'll go with classic this time and check this, uh, right align, and Again, like I said, anytime you go and you make changes throughout your document and you right-click to update it, it's going to go back to the default, which is from template, and I don't like that. So you'll have to come back and make these changes. I know it's burdensome. Hopefully uh, there's a shorter way that I don't know of that you can tell me about. Click OK. Do you want to replace it? Click OK. Hey, there we go. Dumps me right at the end, but when I scroll... But when I scroll to the top, there it is. It's now updated to page 57. Then all the other pages with it will also have been updated and pushed down or and pushed around, like checking out a patient. It's also on page 57. I mean, it bumped everything around, didn't it? Okay. You know how to turn on your show hide codes. So if you don't want this entry in your index, then just go to page 57, turn on your codes, and delete the whole code itself. And then, of course, right-click and update your index. And then right-click again and edit your field and update that as well. And you should be just okay. In fact, let me do it really quick. Go with you to page 57. Hit Enter. And I'm going to come to my Home tab, turn on my Show Codes, and let's say checking in a patient. You no longer are going to be checked in. I, do, I select the coding and the main entry, sub-entry, everything within these little funny brackets here, and hit the Delete key. Okay? And then I can turn off my codes. Now, the important thing ab about turning off your codes before you actually update your index, when you're turning your codes, you notice how everything gets pushed out. If I go to the bottom of my document here, and I right-click and update this, the pagination is going to be way off because that code that I'm showing, that I'm revealing with my show hide codes, is bumping everything down several pages. So you can see it's got 109 pages here. When I turn it off, it's 107 pages. So it does make a huge difference. Always turn off your codes before you update your table of contents, okay? So now when I right click, I can update the field, of course. In fact, I wonder if just editing the field and clicking on index and then clicking OK again and then say, yes, I want to replace it, will actually do it all for me. Just update it and also just uh, replace the index for me. And it did. Look, it got rid of the check in patient up here. Hey, we both learned something now. Instead of right clicking, selecting updating, and then when after updates it, it dumps it to the words default template. And if you don't like that, you'll have to come back to the edit field and click on index anyway. So let's take out some clicks. From here on out, anytime you do an update throughout your document, right click, don't update, just edit the field, click on the index and click OK. It'll do two things. It'll actually keep your template there. And if it doesn't, then of course you want to be able to choose the correct one. 
and then click OK and it'll actually update your index as well. And then that way it, you don't have to do an extra click. So just bypass that when you're updating, go to your edit fields instead of updating. Another thing you can do um, besides manually and going and marking entries throughout your whole document, you can have it automatically mark the entries for you. There's good and bad to this, for example, like the word capitation. If the capitation word appears like 50 times within the document, but the only time it really has any relevance is on page 83, if I manually do it, then I can pick and choose. But if I automatically do it, it'll go through the whole document and say, look, all the capitation's words, I'm going to mark every page number that they're found on. I mean, you go to, a let's say, page 83 here, and it says capitation is a really good word. That doesn't have a whole lot of relevance, so that's the bad side. So again, the good news is automatically you can have it mark all the words, keywords within your document, whatever page you're on, the bad news is is it does it for all words so it's really up to you in any case I'll show you how it's done first of all before you can actually automatically mark all the keywords throughout your document we're going to create a separate document coming up here click on the office logo button click on new double click blank new document and we're going to insert a table in here click on the insert tab click on table and it's just going to be a two by one table well it'll be more but let's start with a two by one here and the purpose of this is that any words you put on the left hand side are going to be the keywords that you want Microsoft Word to look up anything found on the right hand side or in the right column here as we add more cells below is what's going to be put in the index so let me go ahead and start typing in some words here okay you like how I did that I'm really fast. Again, when you were getting a drink, I quickly typed everything in. Anyways, it's boring. You don't want to see me type here. So you get the idea. Again, anything in left-hand columns is what we're going to tell Microsoft Word to look up throughout that whole 103-page document we were just in down at the bottom here. In the right-hand column here, for every word that it finds, it's going to give it a page number, and it's going to put that in the index with this word over here. So there it is, capitation. If it finds 50 of them, it'll list the page numbers and have a dot, 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 a leader to those page numbers with this word couple other things I want to show you. Well, first of all, you don't have to use the same keyword as what you're looking up. Okay, for example, like what about batch? Anytime it finds the word batch, it's going to list all the page numbers, but in the index, it's going to have very funny Bart and alphabetize it with the V because that's the first letter in the phrase here. Uh, very funny Bart dot 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 and all the numbers that the batch is found on. So that doesn't make any sense really to have what you're looking up with something different unless it's something synonymous. Okay. And again, I gave you another example here. Uh, one other thing you can do, actually, is remember how we had our main entries and our sub-entries. So first of all, it's going to look through the document, find all the carriers, and for each carrier, it's going to have this as the main entry, and then colon, and then a space, and then this will be the sub-entry. So anytime it finds the word carrier, it's going to have the main entry insurance companies, and underneath there, dot, 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 every page number that carrier is found. And you'll notice that it's just carrier, it's not plural. So again, you can have whatever you want looked up replaced with whatever you want in the index. Just make it something as close or similar so people don't go, well, very funny, Bart. Hmm, let me see, that's referring to batches. And how do I know that or batch? I don't. So, but anyways, I want to prove my point here. So basically, you want to look up capitation and then index it as capitation with the page numbers. So once you're done creating your left column and your right column and anything you want as a main entry, you're going to put a colon, space, and then a sub-entry if you want to put it in a sub-entry. Go ahead and click the Save button. We'll go to our desktop, and you can name it whatever you want. My entries, you know, auto mark entries. In any case, when I'm done saving it, I'll close out of here, and I'm back to my main document. Now, first of all, you can do this one of two ways. If you don't have an index, you can go ahead and do an auto mark entry from that concordance table that we just created. Or you can go ahead and just, if you already have something in there, like I do here, you can just actually update this. But first we have to mark all the entries, okay? So this is how you're going to do it. You're going to click on the References tab, come over here and click on Insert Index. And then down here when you click on Auto Mark, it's automatically going to open up a window saying, okay, well, where's that concordance table? So I click on Auto Mark. Okay, where is it? Remember, it's on my desktop, so I'm going to click on Desktop. And it's looking for Word documents of 97 through 2003. If you can't find it, it may be the wrong lookup type. So let's do all documents. And there it is. It was hiding, but I found it. It's my entries. Double click on it. Now give it a sec. In the lower left hand corner, you see where it says 107 index entries were marked. I mean, it was lightning. I got a very fast computer, but it went through that whole document really fast, marked all the entries, and boom, it's done. The only thing it didn't do after it marked the entries was update our index table. So we're going to have to update this ourselves here. So before we update it, remember, we don't want to show hide codes on because the pagination is going to be off. It says that there's 109 pages. Well, if I come to the Home tab and turn off my Show Hide Codes, 
look at it down the lower left-hand corner, it's back to 107. So I don't want this screwed up. So I want to make sure I turn off my uh, show hide codes. And then go ahead and update it. It's going to right-click. I'm going to click Edit Field instead because updating the field, once it updates, it doesn't keep my default template here. So actually, I'm going to try to hit two birds with one stone. When I click Edit Field and click Index, again, it wants to go to the default from template. No, I don't want that. I want the classic with my numbers and my leader here. And then click OK. It says, do you want to replace it? Click OK. And there it is. It's done. So it automatically, as you can see right here, remember how we had very funny Bart was what we want it to um, replace in the index with what it was looking up, the batch. So it found the keyword batch on page IV Roman numeral 1516. And then in here, it alphabetized it, sorted it, and had the word tied to it, very funny Bart. So if I actually go throughout the document, it's going to have batch, but down here in my index is going to be listed as very funny. I mean, makes no sense, right? But hey, you could actually screw this up. So you want to keep what you're looking up as your keyword. Probably best to also keep it with what you're actually, um, people are going to be finding in your index, okay? How about the carrier? Let me scroll up to the C's here. And remember how we had the keyword where we were going to look up the word carrier, but how we want it replaced in the index was the main entry as insurance companies. There's the main entry. And then down below, we're going to have it as uh, carriers, the sub-entry. So there's carriers, and it's on page 3, and then V, and VI, and 10, and it's got them all there. So, hey, it does it for me, the main entry and sub-entries, too. That's pretty cool. And then, of course, my normal entry here, which was capitation. When I did my auto market, found it on additional pages there. And as a quick review, when you're going through your document, you can manually mark your entries um, with main entry or sub-entry, K, and mark them. And it leaves this window open so you can mark additional entries throughout your document, but always click cancel, move to the next page, or you can leave it open. And then you can insert and mark entries from the screen as well. You know, there's more than one way to do this or one screen to mark your entries. You can do a con concordance file and auto mark all those entries by creating a table in a separate Word document, of course. And then just by not clicking on any of these buttons, but clicking OK, if I clicked it right now, OK, it would add another index right where my cursor's at here. So I don't want to click OK. No, there's no button here. It says, hey, click on this button to insert an index. You're just going to have to remember that, that when you click OK and you don't use any of these buttons, it automatically assumes you're going to insert an index, and we'll click Cancel. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.